Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Shrigim to Come video, we're going to be discussing tech news which have popped up over the past 24 or so hours. One of these is very interesting indeed. In fact, it illustrates just how much of a threat Intel believe and perceive AMD to be, with the i9-7980XE featuring 18 cores and 36 threads. We're also going to touch upon some Vega information as well, because there are a couple of new Vega variants which have passed RRA certification. But let's begin with the perhaps elephant in the room, also known as Intel. So yes, Threadripper is going to offer a myriad of different choices on its X399 platform. And of course, the internet went kind of ballistic when we heard rumours that we were going to be seeing up to 16 cores, 32 threads from AMD. And of course, that has since been confirmed. But that pales in comparison to 18 cores, 36 threads. Now, this is, once again, utilising the Skylake X architecture. And once again, this will, of course, be on Intel's X299 platform, which offers, among other things, up to four channels of DDR4 support and, of course, 44 lanes of PCIe 3.0. Now, we have discussed quite a lot of this platform, so I don't really want to go into that too much. However, there are several new processors which have been leaked. Now, this leak, talk, leak comes to us, excuse me, from videocards.com, and they have confirmed this from, quote, multiple sources. There is the ATXE, which, as I said a couple of times now, has 18 cores, 36 threads. The 7960X, which has 16 cores, 32 threads, which in terms of core count at least, is very much on par with the high-end Threadripper. And then finally, the 7940X is the new processor in the lineup, which has 14 cores, 28 threads. Now, before you ask about clock speeds, we don't know. I can tell you that the 7900X has a turbo clock 3.0 frequency of around 4.5 gigahertz. Whether this is going to scale in line with the 7980XE and we're going to see a similar clock speed or simply because of the sheer number of cores packed into a particular space, it possibly might dip a little bit, let's say to 4 to 4.2 gigahertz. That's obviously speculation, not confirmation. <clears throat> well, unfortunately, we just don't know. So you're going to say to yourself, well, what does that actually mean for AMD? Does that mean AMD are screwed? Well, not really. I mean, at the end of the day, whether you want to like it or not, Threadripper is essentially based upon Nepal's, which is a four-die MCM. Technically speaking, that means that AMD, if they wanted to, could decide, because remember the pin count is exactly identical, they could decide to release a 32-core processor. Now, I say could decide, because could means, well, you know, it's costing them a lot of money to produce that in terms of, well, you know, how many people are actually going to want it, I guess, is really how I should have phrased that. What's the demand going to be like? Unfortunately, we just don't know. I mean... Cores by themselves don't necessarily mean too much. There is like a drop-off, essentially, where, well, quite honestly, the games and even 3D rendering probably isn't going to be that important to you. Now, obviously, in certain instances, if you're doing a lot of virtual machine work, perhaps if you're not just doing video editing, but let's say you're doing some Blender work, you're doing some Adobe After Effects for some compositing, you may be using, oh, I don't know, doing a little bit of audio editing or... Photoshop work or whatever else. Obviously, CPUs and cores are not the only thing you have to bear in mind. There is also little things like, oh, I don't know, sheer abundance of RAM. But assuming that that isn't particularly an issue, then this combined with a fast or a couple of fast SSDs, ideally on like an M.2 drive, then that would be absolutely phenomenal. The other thing, and this is kind of the last little caveat with this, at the end of the day, this has not been confirmed by Intel, but it looks to be true because, as I said, they've apparently confirmed it with multiple sources. And the second and the uh, last thing I want to bring up, and this has actually nothing to do with the i9s, instead it's to do with the i7s and i5s. So a rumour was that the 7640X, which is the 4-core, four 4-thread four processor, the rumour was that it was going to be listed as an i7 part. That no longer seems to be the case. And according to videocards.com, 
uh, and an image they've managed to grab. It looks like it's an i5 after all, not i7, which to be honest makes an awful lot of sense. I don't understand why uh, they was going to name it i7 or if that rumor was even true at any point in time. But obviously there are still the regular discrepancies according to um, videocards.com, they have the 7740X, which is 4 cores, 8 threads, which is based upon the KB Lake X architecture, and then finally the 7640X, which is once again based upon KB Lake uh, architecture as well. Phew, that's a lot of information, isn't it? So, uh, the last bit of news from Intel, and this is kind of a small one, um, Intel are releasing a new, wait for it, compute card. Now, once again, this is possibly not going to be something that everyone is going to be interested in, but thanks to CNX software, we have some basic understandings of what we're going to be seeing in in this particular processor. There are a couple of different models, Apollo Lake and a KB Lake, and they offer a variety of different specifications. For example, Apollo Lake has Celeron N3450, a quad core which is running at 1.1 uh, gigahertz base, turbos to 2.2 gigahertz, and an Intel HD graphics at generation 9, and that's a 7.5 watts TDP. Whereas on the other hand, there's also a KB Lake, which, fe which features a core M3, a 7Y30 dual core, a uh, quad thread, so basically hyper threading, runs at 2.6 gigahertz turbo, and has just a 4.5 watts TDP. And this also comes with a whole bunch of different stuff, 4 gigabytes of low power DDR3 memory running 1866 megahertz and 128 gigabytes of SSD uh, sorry, storage space. This is one of those cool little utilities that once again not everyone's going to find a usage for, but if you do need that kind of uh, portability and that particular um, device, well then you might want to keep your eyes out. Finally, let's move on to Vega. This is not new information in terms of specification stuff, but instead we're going to be reporting a small tip bit which has popped up on um, the RRA certification board. This is basically means that all customer ASICs, in other words, you know, chips and boards and that type of stuff, in other words, essentially hardware which is going to be sent through um, to various vendors. When it passes through South Korea, this is very much like the US, but there is a difference. The United States keeps these certifications, excuse me, private, whereas RRA publishes them on the public domain. So, what we have here is a couple of new Vega derivatives. And we can clearly see that, based upon AMD's previous naming conventions, we've always had, um, sorry, based upon AMD's previous naming conventions, there have been a couple of new ones which have popped up over the past... Uh, we don't exactly have full specifications of the card, unfortunately, but what I can tell you, of course, is that this is once again a sign that AMD are slowly, slowly, slowly creeping the manufacturing process of a Vega, well, closer to release. And in theory, at least, it looks like they're going to be keeping it on schedule. From what AMD are telling anyone who will listen, we should be having the customer derivative versions, and by customer derivatives, I, of course, mean gaming-focused ones, by, well, a couple of months. Obviously, I'm going to remain somewhat cautious to say that we're going to get high production numbers because ultimately, unfortunately, HBM2 is being a bit of a bitch to manufacturer, as we've discussed previously with SK Hynix and other uh, companies have commented that, you know, yields have not been ideal and they've also not been hitting the speeds as easily as what they'd hoped. But even so, um, with any luck over the next couple of months, we should at least start seeing the parts on the shelves. And you know what? The fact of the matter is, even if you can't procure them fairly easily, let's say they're quite limited in supply, and there may be even some price gouging going on, at least someone, somewhere, is going to have one of the cards, so you can say, okay, you know what? Um, <clears throat> it's 20% faster, just for example, than the 1080 Ti. I've got a G-Sync monitor, I'm good. Or you know what? It's 60% faster than the GTX 1080 Ti. I'm willing to upgrade, or maybe you'll just wait for Volta. Either way, at least we'll know for certain what we're going to actually be looking forward to purchasing. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.